Okay, so I've been meaning to do a response to Professor Anton on the whole uh, epistemology and ontology deal. Um, I just watched his most recent video on ontology, which um, I was hoping might clear up his position. Because, I, because for a while, I, I was generally confused about what his position was. But one thing that latest video uh, cleared up for me is that he has no idea what epistemology actually is. Um, it talks about epistemology in terms of is it real? Then goes on the fact to the fact about you know is a dream real? Well, yeah, it's real in its own ontological domain. Uh, you know, well that's actually an epistemological question. It's one that uh, William James answered when he came up with his, his idea of of uh, radical empiricism. Is the point is a mystical experience, a dream, an emotion, anything that is part of empirical data, and we have to uh, use. Yeah, the maximum pragmatism of how does what what uh, cash value does this does this action give me? Um, that that terms that gives us the justification of that belief, and that's really what epistemology is. is it's about object uh, is about uh, justification of our beliefs. Now, um, any sort of belief about the world in, entails a question of justification. Yeah. It, uh, now, unless you're going to sort of assert ontology in a way that uh, you uh, you're just going to just pull this idea out of your ass and and not try to justify it at all, yeah. That I mean, that's ontology without epistemology, but it's not very good ontology. Any good ontology is going to have epistemology in it. Um, and he told also he had previously tried to talk about you know whether you know one whether ontology precedes epistemology and talks about, you know, sort of a dog's relation to the world. It's uh, being, well, uh, let's go for like the, the dogs and go to microbes because I want to say that microbes have a kind of epistemology. Yeah, any sort of microorganism, any, any living being at all needs to tell the difference between food and poison. And so a microbe in this environment, it's crying around, it's, it, you know, it detects some presence. Yeah, that's, that's what, uh, there's some perturbation of its senses. Uh, yeah, and let's say, oh, there, that's something there. Can I eat it, or is it going to attack me? Is it, you know, that is an epistemological question. That, you know, how justified is it in going in pursuing that that thing, or going away from it? See that uh, that's justification, and that's epistemology. So, and you know, uh, Professor Anton also talks about like language and. Um, yeah, you know, how language isn't just about you know describing truth values, but also um, giving social cues and uh, you know tell, um, you know determining courses of action. It basically, kind of Wittgensteinian slash um, who's the other guy who wrote um, uh, how to do things with words, not Strawson. Um, anyway, anyway um, so so anyway, given that kind of language analysis where where words are sort of actions. Um, well, it, it's it's funny to me because um, see, I, I've mentioned before I have Asperger's, so it's it takes it takes me um, it it's more difficult for me to learn different social cues from people, and I'm I've gotten to a point where I can do it pretty functionally by, by now. But but you know, growing up, that was always difficult for me. I was reading social cues, and and that is an epistemological question: Is this girl just being friendly with me, or is she flirting with me? That's that's epistemology, and. It, you know, be, how justified I am in believing one or the other is going to have a big impact on, on my actions. So, you know, there. So, language does have that inherently epistemological question. We're trying to come to a mutual understanding. Yeah, that's what uh, Jurgen Habermas called communicative action, where you're trying you're trying to understand one another, and that that is epistemology. How justified am I in believing in, in um, my interpretation of that? You know, I just I understand that. Early on, I was having some trouble interpreting uh, what Professor Anton was saying, uh, so so there was an epistemological breakdown there. So, so I think that yeah, you know, he's got a really wrong-headed view about epistemology, um, and I I'd recommend uh, at least one epistemologist to Professor Anton, um, Susan Hack, who did, who I did a video on earlier on found herentism, because because it is you know, we think that I, I think you know. Early on, he, one thing he was kind of trying to say is that uh, is is that the you know, epistemology is like starting from this Cartesian subject, you know, this co this cogito, and trying to figure out what is out in the world. Well, no, that's that's an epistemological starting point, um, but 
the point, but it's not like uh, the only possible epistemological starting point. Um, and and you know, I think that you know, epistemology that starts from the Cartesian cogito, uh, and you know, ontology that starts from first principles are both kind of you know the the sort of um, limit cases for th those are examples of bad epistemology and bad ontology. And I think I think that actually, if you start in the middle, where we are already within a world. Um, and then you go know, from there, then that is uh, where then that is uh, you know where you have good epistemology and good ontology. And I think that at, actually at that point, um, it the, the distinction between that those two, as well as with aesthetics and ethics and uh, you know all uh, all other sorts of uh, disciplines, they all blend together because the, because you know when you get to the actual lived experience, there's you know just constantly trying to work your way through the environment querying what is around you and what and and trying to and, and trying to come to some sort of understanding and and all and at that level all these different disciplines kind of blur together and uh we create these abstractions out of that into these disciplines like ontology and epistemology but in actual lived experience that's all one thing so i saw that's it for now peace <laughs>